We just did the Anaheim Ducks season by the numbers. Now we're going to go to the AHL and we're going to do the San Diego Goals season by the numbers on this edition of Locked On Anaheim Ducks. Your Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez. I've been covering hockey for over a decade. I've been covering covering minor league hockey for well over a decade. I'm the PA voice for the Coachella Valley Firebirds and also a contributor to Defend the Nest, which covers the San Diego Gulls. And this episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. Join your friends and download Monopoly Go now on the App Store or Google Play for free. As I've mentioned, I've been covering minors for a while and have been covering the goals for a long time. And I've seen plenty of goals teams. The last couple of seasons have not gone the best. But there is reason for hope for San Diego. There's a lot of reason for hope. And I was a little bit positive for the Ducks side, I'm also positive about the San Diego Gulls side as well. I'll get to that momentarily. But to see that there's some similarities between the Ducks and the Gulls, I mean, there's a lot of similarities. When I actually go through some of the numbers, you'll see what I mean. But there were also some good moments for this San Diego Gulls team. And there was some very good action on the ice, which is a positive sign and especially a step forward from last season. Last season, the Ducks were in last place. They've improved a little bit. And looking at some of the minutia numbers, there is improvement under Greg Cronin for the San Diego goals. There was quite a bit of improvement for the goals. And this is especially true when you consider the previous coaches the goals have had. This year, they have Matt McIlvain at the helm and he has helped this goals team. I mean, the record doesn't really indicate that, but trust me, it is absolutely there. There is a big difference between last season and this season. And I'll start with last year because it's pretty jarring. Um, I'll start with the obvious, the points. Last season, the San Diego goals had 43 points, only 20 wins. That's it. So 43 last year, dead last in the league. This year, San Diego, 63 points, a 20-point improvement, 26 wins overall. To have a 20-point improvement and not be in last place, especially in a tough division like the Pacific, I would consider that a small victory. When you're in a division with the Firebirds, with the Roadrunners, with the Rain, with the Eagles. Yeah, you're going to have some tough games. And this, despite the fact that the San Diego Goals, they were largely good against everyone not in the Pacific. They were fine against the other teams in the Central Division. Actually, the Central Division, the Goals had a winning record. Let me repeat that. The Goals had a winning record against the Central Division. Yeah, let this sink in. They had double-digit wins against the Central Division, a division with the Admirals, who are good, the Griffins, who are pretty good, the Ice Hogs, the Stars, the Moose, the Wild, the Wolves. Like, they went to Chicago. They went to Illinois, got some wins out of there. That's pretty impressive. So I got to give my kudos to the goals for going into another division and showing, you know what? We could beat these guys. And they did. They did beat them pretty good. So got to give my stick taps wherever possible as far as that division. Um, let's go over something I did similarly for the Ducks. I'll do it for the goals as well. This number, not a good one, 12. That is the number of home wins at Pachanga Arena. I pointed this out on the article on Defend the Nest. The San Diego goals were 12, 18, and 6 at home. They were 14, 
17 and 5 on the road. They did better on the road than they did at home. Just like the Anaheim Ducks. They never really caught on. Like, they never really had a long winning streak at Pechanga Arena. And it's the second consecutive year that the goals have a better road record than home record, just like their parent club, the Anaheim Ducks. So for what it's worth, I hope this trend turns around because Pachanga Arena is a great, great place to watch a game, especially their theme nights. They go all out. But the fact that they only managed to get 30 points at home and 33 points on the road, eh, yeah, it's somewhat concerning. But when the Ducks are doing it as well, maybe it's not so weird after all. Maybe they're very similar or as the saying goes, the apple doesn't f- <laughs> I can see this. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Why did I have trouble? But I'm going to keep this in, folks, because whatever. All right. Uh, let's go over some more numbers just for the sake of going over some more numbers. Um, I did the points at home. The goal differential. Not as bad as you would think. Negative 29. Ooh, that's a big improvement over the previous year. To have a losing record and to only have a negative 25 goal differential, that's not bad. I mean, the Calgary Wranglers are in the playoffs and they have a goal differential of minus 9. The Henderson Silver Knights, their differential is negative 53. San Jose is way worse. So when you say negative 29, that's not bad. I mean, that's not nearly as bad as, say, oh, the Bridgeport Islanders, a minus 60, or the Chicago Wolves, minus 61. Minus 29 is not bad at all, especially considering the previous year, which I'm just going to rehash for all of you. It's painful. Last year's goal differential was minus 101. So that's a 72 goal differential improvement from last season, if you can believe that. I like that. I'm going to be happy about that change. Um, What other weird stats can we throw out? Oh, actually, I got a really good one, but I'm going to save it for a positive part. Um, I'm going to go... Actually, no, I'm going to go with... 64 for a reason. 64 is the new points record in a single season for the AHL San Diego goals that was accomplished by Andrew Agazzino. He beats Sam Carrick's 61 five seasons ago. So 64, a single season mark for the San Diego goals. Agazzino had 26 goals, 38 assists, a very solid year for Andrew Agazzino. That's a career high for him. Single season high all time for the goals in nine years. So congrats to Agazzino on that cool stat. All right, we're going to head into the first intermission right now, and I will give some more stats. I'll try to give some more positive stats here. And then in the final segment, I'm going to talk about the Calder Cup playoffs. Stay locked in. Now a brief word from who's this word from um we're, we're, we're live folks i closed that window but you know we're just gonna press on and this is brought to you by fanduel oh of course it's fanduel america's number one sports book it's playoff time in the nba and nhl and also the ahl did you know that fanduel has ahl betting lines i bet you didn't know that right now new customers get 150 dollars in bonus bets Guaranteed. That's 150 bucks win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook and the official sports betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. And please gamble responsibly. We're also brought to you by the Game Time app. Now, folks, Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier if you still want to see the Clippers play. 
and with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA playoff tickets. They have last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, views from all seats in the arena. You could buy your tickets with two clicks, one, two taps, and that is it. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL. That's L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty bucks off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about. Some positive numbers here. And there's a really positive one that I want to get to right now. 2%. Huh? Um, JD, what, is, what does 2% have to do with that? That surely cannot be a penalty kill. No, or probably. No, no, no. Okay, go with me on this. There was a stretch of about a month. And this is a pretty good stretch. Between January 12th and February 14th, that's a long span. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. In 13 games between January 12th and February 14th, the PK was on a different level. Guys like Drew Hellison knocking down pucks, blocking shots. That PK was brilliant and almost perfect in that span they allowed one out of 50 they allowed one goal in 50 chances to the opponent's power play their pk was 49 out of 50 almost perfect 98 percent the one goal that was allowed was against the Calgary Wranglers on the road. That was a 7-4 to victory for the San Diego Goals. That was, by the way, that was a blowout of a game. That one I specifically remember watching on TV because everybody just went off on that game. Everybody went off. Glenn Godden had a five-point game. Olin Zellweger had a three-point game. There was some rough stuff going on. I mean, that was a very entertaining game. Calgary, I mean, here's how crazy it was. Calgary was given nine power play opportunities. They scored on one of them. And that goal happened pretty much in garbage time. So do I really count that one? I mean, I guess I, I mean, I have to count that one for the stats, but it was a three, four goal lead at the time. There was like four minutes, five minutes left. Uh, Coronado scored on the power play. Do I really even count that? Because at that point of the game, San Diego knew they had it won, and that was it. So one out of 50. Yeah, they were over against. You ready for this? They were over against the Iowa Wild, the Iowa Wild, Abbotsford, 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 Iowa, Iowa, Milwaukee, Tucson, Colorado, Calgary. They allowed one to Calgary, San Jose. One for 50 they allowed 49 out of 50 or 98 percent that i haven't seen a run like that from the anaheim ducks and it's very rare for any nhl teams for that matter to have that kind of streak they had a 40 i want to say it was a 46 pk streak it was 45 or 46 i have to actually go back and look so the number for that will be 45 or 46 but for positiveness we'll say 46 because i think that's what it was 46 consecutive penalties killed for the San Diego goals. That's a massive streak, folks. And one of the most positive numbers that I can take away from the San Diego goals this year. They had a very good run for a bit. For a while, it looked like they had a shot at a playoff spot. Of course, they didn't. But we'd like to think that there was still some kind of shot Um, Overall, at the end of the season, the PK wound up being 77.9%, which is not exactly top of the league. In fact, that's actually amongst the worst PKs in the league. Um, Not a lot of teams had PKs below 
80%. And there's only a few of them. San Jose, San Diego, Iowa, Manitoba, Texas, Rochester, Laval, Belleville, and Lehigh Valley. And that's it. Um, out of those teams, the only teams with worse PKs than the goals are San Jose and Iowa and Manitoba, and that is it. So they were 29th in the AHL in PK. And I think that kind of tells you how miraculous that streak was during the season. To go 45-46 without allowing a goal, that's incredible, folks. That's really incredible. So what does that mean? Well, overall, for the whole season, San Diego allowed 62 power play goals out of 281 times. So if you take away that one for 50, they allowed 61 over 231, which is not good. It's very much not good. That's only a 73.5% PK clip. Yeah. Everything aside from that month, the PK was, you know, not that good. But because of that streak, it went up to 77.9, if you can believe that. So if they can play like they did that month on the PK for the rest of the season, I guarantee you they're in a playoff spot. Guaranteed. All right, let's go over a couple of more numbers before we head into the second intermission. Um, I mean, that was the one that I really wanted to get to was that PK streak. I also want to talk about goaltending a little bit. And I'm going to go with 9-10. Save percentage for Tomas Sukanik. Now, I know Callie Klang was a little bit snake bitten. Callie Klang had a couple of starts that I wasn't really impressed with. Um, and that did kind of skew his numbers down a bit. But especially towards the end of the season, I was very impressed with Sukanik in net. He wound up with a 9-10 save percentage, which is slightly above league average. Goals against of 292. I thought he was very good in net in general. And while a lot of folks like the Wu Klang... I I got to give my flowers to Sikanik in this one. I thought he was the slightly better goalie just in general. So that's what I'm going to go with as my final one. All right. We're going to head into the second intermission, and I'm going to talk about the Calder Cup playoffs. We'll get to that on the other side. And now a brief word from Monopoly Go. All right. So we got to pause here and talk about Monopoly Go. And I know what you're saying. Yeah, you've talked about that already. But there's just so much good stuff in this game. Because in Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for timed tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. And the more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And you can also get unique stickers that you can trade with your friends, awesome playing pieces, and hilarious emojis for taunting your friends when you smash their buildings. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with ever-changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini-games like Digging for Treasure or a Robot Pachinko Machine. I cannot do the robot, folks. But there's always new timed events to help you win big, like big multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go, so get off the bench and download it now on Google Play or the App Store for free. Game on. Beep boop, beep boop. Welcome back to Locked On Anaheim Ducks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I really can't do the robot, folks. If there was one thing in regards to dancing that I wish I could do, um, I've just never been able to do the robot effectively. It's also a lot harder to do the robot when you're holding a mic with one hand. Um, I don't have a stand for this yet, I because I didn't plan on the mic other mic going out. But I've I've been I've been holding this the whole time, the whole time I've been holding this microphone. 
Um, there's no stand on it, as you can see yet. Um, should get it later this week, I hope. So anyway, um, yeah, welcome back to episode, silly episode number 873 of Locked on Anaheim Ducks. Let's talk about the Calder Cup playoffs because I've been watching this very closely because I want to see who the Firebirds are going to play for obvious reasons. But I'm going to start with the first round. And there's a couple of series that I want to really talk in depth about. But just let's go over the first round in the Eastern Conference first. Let's start in the North Division. There was only one first round series between the Belleville Senators and the Toronto Marlies. This one I want to start with because this one had a lot of fireworks the whole time. Kyle Clifford, former LA King. Boko Imama, former Ontario Rain player, former Tucson Roadrunner, now playing in Belleville. They got into it in Game 2. They got into it massively in Game 3. Game 1, Belleville won 3-1. to one. Game 2, Toronto won 4-3 in overtime. Game three in Toronto. Or was it in Toronto? I, don't, I think that one happened to be in Belleville, actually. Um, Belleville won four to three in overtime. But that one had some big time fireworks at the very end. You had guys fighting after the goal had been scored. Oh, but it got worse. There was actually fighting going on in the handshake line. Kyle Clifford and Boko Alamo went at it. Went at it. Then Zach Solo and Donovan Sobrango went at it also in the handshake line. Not everyone participated in the handshake line for Toronto. There was a long time where they just left the ice. And for a good two minutes, I thought, oh, damn, like, they're really not going to shake hands? Like, I get that they hate each other. I get that they were fighting after the goal had been scored and the series is over. I get that. I get that Toronto's pissed off. And for a few minutes, I thought, this is this is just crappy. But most of the players did come back out on the ice, and the fighting still took place. So not every player finished the handshake line. They eventually had to separate all the players and there was only a few players from Toronto side and almost everyone from the Belleville side because they just won. So, yeah, not the best look. I mean, I that's something that I've never seen. I've never seen players actually go at it in the handshake line. If you haven't seen the video already, um, there is video available. Just look up Toronto Marley's brawl or Belleville Senators brawl. It, it's kind of wild that this happened after the series had ended. So that's just what I wanted to talk about very briefly was just how crazy that was. So in the North, we have the Cleveland Monsters versus the Belleville Senators and the Rochester Amherst versus the Syracuse Crunch. Um, just a quick prediction. I'm going to say Cleveland wins that series in a sweep and I, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Rochester on this one. Just because they have home ice. But it's gonna be close. In the Atlantic Division, Wilkesbury Scranton versus Lehigh Valley. This one I did not expect. I expected Wilkesbury Scranton to win this one in two. Nope. Lehigh Valley. Two one-goal wins, 2-1 two to one and 5-4 in overtime. Lehigh Valley won that one in a sweep. They won game two at home. That was a 1-1-1 one, one, one series. So the six takes out the three. Oh, but Hartford, the fifth seed, took out the Charlotte Checkers in three games, including an overtime victory that might have demoralized Charlotte a little bit. So in the Atlantic, you have the defending champion, Hershey Bears, against the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. Hershey should win that series. Providence versus Hartford. Providence should win that series. In fact, I have both of those as sweeps. Hershey in three, Providence in three. Now let's go to the Western Conference, the one that you all are all waiting for. First round, Texas swept the Manitoba Moose. That wasn't even close behind Maverick Bork and their 
other stellar players. The Texas Stars demolished the Manitoba Moose in a sweep, including a 6-3 thrashing in Game 1. So that one wasn't close. So in the division semifinals, you have the Milwaukee Admirals versus the Texas Stars. Milwaukee should win that one, but I think that's going to be close. I think Milwaukee wins, but it might take all five games. Texas is a tough four seed. They're a very tough four seed. So I can see that one ending in Milwaukee going the distance. Then you have the Grand Rapids Griffins versus the Rockford Ice Hogs. That one, I have Grand Rapids winning that one, but that's going to be close. That's going to be very close. Then the Pacific Division. Let's talk about... Um, I'm going to talk about Ontario versus Bakersfield first. Ontario won game one in a massacre. I was at that game at Toyota Arena. Ontario had a huge second period against Bakersfield. Poor Jack Campbell did not see it coming. Ontario won that one 5-1. to one. Then they beat Bakersfield 3-1. to one. The game-winning goal came with only four minutes left. They put an empty netter on for good measure. So Ontario swept that series two games to none. The Big, big shock. The Calgary Wranglers, the seventh seed, defeated the number two seeded Tucson Roadrunners in a sweep. A lot of folks expected it to be a Firebirds versus Roadrunners Pacific Division final. A lot of folks were expecting that. Now with Tucson out of the picture, it's Coachella Valley versus Calgary in the next round. So, who will Ontario face? Colorado and Abbotsford have been, had an epic series, a very epic series. Abbotsford won game one, four to two in Colorado. Then Colorado came back and won game two in overtime, five to four. Then game three, the energy was there for both teams. Like both teams gave their best shots. It felt like a heavyweight match until Abbotsford finally won it late in overtime they took out the Colorado Eagles 2-1 to one in the game, 2-1 to one in the series. So now you have Ontario versus Abbotsford and Coachella Valley versus Calgary. The Firebirds, I have them winning that one in four. The Wranglers just do not have the same firepower that they did last year. Dustin Wolf is still very good, but Coachella Valley has so much firepower. And now everyone's back. I'm thinking that one's Firebirds in four. Ontario versus Abbotsford. Abbotsford has Zach Sochenko as their number one goalie, and they have to sign someone else to be their backup because the Vancouver Canucks, they're having their goalie issues. You may have heard that your Demko is going to be out for the rest of the playoffs. So they've had to call up Tolopilo. So you're, and DeSmith is now up. So now you're relying on Zach Sochenko. But... Because, and here's the reason why, and I actually want to point this out. Ontario did not voluntarily give up home ice advantage. The reason that Abbotsford has home ice advantage is because there is no arena availability for the latter three games, believe it or not. Toyota Arena chose to way overbook, so they relinquish home ice advantage. So games one and two are in Ontario. Games three, four, and five are in Abbotsford. So for that reason, I have I have Abbotsford winning this one in five for the sole reason that they have home ice advantage. So that is it. That's it with my predictions. And we're just going to end it right there. So just once again, thank you all for watching. Thanks for listening. Don't forget this podcast is free and available across all platforms, including Stitcher, Spotify, Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, etc. You can follow me on Twitter at StimpyJD. The show's Twitter is at LO underscore Ducks. And once again, thank you all for your continued support. It is so greatly appreciated. Email your questions, LockedOnAnaheimDucks at gmail.com. Thank you all so much. For Locked On Anaheim Ducks and Locked On Goals, I'm Jason J.D. Hernandez saying have a great rest of the day. Please remember to be safe out there. Please be kind to one another and ducks and gulls fly together. <laughs>